Okay, okay. How's everyone doing today? Pretty good. All right, we're going to be super, um, we're going to be, uh, we're going to end a little early today so that everyone can uh, head over to the bold Zoom. Um, look, I got my shirt on today. Who's Excellent. excited about bold? I am. Who else is excited? I'm very excited. Michael and I are in the same group. Oh, are we? A sign group. Yes, yeah. we are. Wow, fantastic. All right, all right. Now, I don't know if that's fair. They're putting all the superstars together or what? <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, I'm telling you, bold has been a bold. Bold has been a turning point for me on several occasions. Right. Um, a, a lot of times, what's interesting is um, you you hear a particular message at a particular moment of your of your growth. And yeah, I, I've taken bold a lot of times. I probably I have to go back and count. I think I've probably taken bold like thirteen or fourteen times. And the fact of the matter is, is I've learned something new every single time, right? Because I, I heard somebody else say something that I needed to hear at that moment. And it took me to a different mindset and it took me to a different place production wise. And it helped me identify habits that sucked and it um, helped me identify habits that I needed to adopt, right? So I want to congratulate everyone that's, that's taking part. A couple of quick uh, comments though. Number one is, is, I don't think it's too late. And get you in there if you'd like. If you're having a moment of, oh my gosh, what am I doing? I need to be in bold. Uh, I think we can help help you get there. Um, the other thing I want to share is that it is nine to twelve Monday, or I'm sorry, uh, for six Thursdays in a row. So one thing that you need to make sure you're keeping in mind is you got to lead generate some other time, right? So for those in bold, it might be uh, a good strategy that on Thursdays after bold, you make your your call session or your lead gen time. Um, uh, towards the end of the day and catch the people like we were talking about yesterday that just are never going to be available in the morning, okay? So um, don't forget that you're going to need to shuffle your calendar around to make sure that, um, uh, that, that you don't miss out on that session. Like we talked about before, um, this is going to sound a little harsh. If we're sitting here at the end of the month and you say, "Oh, I've been really busy with bold," well, first of all, bold is about making contacts and you know growing your business and meeting people, right? But don't 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 tell me, "Oh, I was in bold, so I couldn't hit my numbers. I was busy." You got to say to yourself, "I'm in bold. That's going to take some time, so I need to re-strategize how I'm going to use my time, so that I don't have to use this as an excuse for um, underperformance." Does that make sense? Right, like a couple months ago, we had, oh, I was family reunion. You know, I was busy with family reunion. That's why I didn't hit my numbers. It's not a good excuse, guys. You knew family reunion was coming. The same thing with, oh, well, January and February are no good in real estate. Um, you know why? It's because you didn't work in October, November, December, right? We all know Christmas is coming. We all know Thanksgiving is coming, right? None of us are going to work, want to work at the last two months of the year. So let's, let's make hay now, right now. Does that make sense? Okay, beautiful. Who wants to share some good news? We all saw Kathy's video yesterday, yes? Pretty inspiring, yes? Are my speakers working? Hey, thanks for putting me on blast, Bill. I gotta tell you something, Kathy. Well, first of all, I appreciate your, your hard work and your tenacity, right? But I also appreciate your willingness to share because there is at least one person, probably more like, I don't know, 30 or 40 people in the chat that need to watch that video a couple of times. Because I thought it, it was really inspiring, Kathy. Thank you so much. Thanks for sharing. That's why I, I appreciate it. That was Bill pretty much cornering me so <laughs> but I really appreciate it yeah, that was really awesome to watch thank you for sharing yeah I, look we all need to hear that stuff we all need confirmation just like we heard from Liz yesterday we need confirmation that we are um we need confirmation that what we're doing is ultimately going to blossom right and that once we get rid of our fear um 
we start to see results that we're not used to seeing. Candace, it looked like you wanted to say something. I do. What, what I wanted to say is, Kathy, just awesome job. And this, this is a perfect example of Kathy taking action consistently and, and just taking action, taking action, taking action. And then all of a sudden, all of what she's done is snowballing because that's the way it works. You just have to be consistent, consistent. Doesn't look like you're moving the needle. And then all of a sudden the threads through the needle and you've woven a tapestry. And it was a lot of tears. Everybody knows I have done a lot of crying. Yeah. yeah. But she broke through. Well, the cool yeah. part is, is that, um, you know, you, you just listed what four or five, five or six different people that you're now in courtship with. But what's interesting is that's going to lead to a bunch of other opportunities, right? You already told me one of those people has another home to sell, right? Well, let me tell you what happened last person that's going to buy the land. It's like you ask, you shall receive, but it's like, what do you do now? Hang on just one, one second. I'm trying to share my screen and I think I might've lost you, Kathy. Um, just one second. Kathy I'll, Kathy, I'll share my builder presentation with you. There we go. Okay, great. Okay, can you say that one more time, Kathy, just to make sure everyone heard you? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm listening. I have to finish writing the contract, but I'm listing a piece of land over in Powder Springs and the person who's buying the land is going to be de developing the land and putting homes on the land. And they asked me, well, they told me that I will be their point, their, their go-to realtor, sell the, the um, houses. Wow. Love that. So, Absolutely love that. All right, you guys, more and more proof that this, this stuff works, right? You just, you, if everything works if you work and nothing works if you don't work. You heard that line, uh, uh, Candace, before? Right? Do, do FISBOs work? Yeah, if you work FISBOs, they work. Do open houses work? Yeah, if you do open houses, they work. If you, if you complain that they don't work, yeah, that you're right, they don't work. Okay, um, let's move right into uh, the, the heart of the discussion today. Um, I shared a document on the announcements page um, a couple minutes ago um, that is called 19 to connect and 36 to convert. So this is the document right here. And um, I wanna just spend a couple of moments um, defining a couple of terms real fast, okay? Um, Andy and Leslie did their 36 touch uh, program um, about a week or two ago. Um, and I, I believe that, I'm sure that was recorded. Let me see if I can get, um, 36 touch the video and send it out to you guys. I'll chat with Melody about that. But in the meantime, this is kind of the basic structure. So let me define a couple of terms for you. When we run our um, MREA economic model and we're trying to, to find the connection between the number of dollars that we want to earn and the daily activities that we need to have, uh, which, which generally is a discussion of contacts and appointments, okay? Um, what we say is there's a mathematical connection between the number of people that you are going to um, uh, have in your database and communicate with properly, and that will yield you a certain number of closings. So pop quiz, how many people do you need to have in your database properly communicated with in order to have one closing per year? Who can tell me? 16. Exactly. Great job, Rick. Great job. Okay, so with that, I, I, I've done this math for you guys before, but let's say that the average commission check is $10,000. And when you have 16 people in your database and you communicate with them systematically each year, we're going to talk about what that means in a second. That is, uh, you divide that number by 16, and every person in your database should be worth $625 if you sell that number, if you sell a you know, $333,000 house on average, should be worth $625. Now, I hate saying it that way. Um, that's not what I mean, that they're worth $625. I'm saying if you go out and grow your database and then you systematically communicate with it, that is, that is a potential future earnings that you could have. 
Make sense? Okay. Now, what is communicating with them systematically? So now we have to go back and we have to change um, uh, a little bit of the way we think about a, a couple of things here, okay? There's a difference what Keller Williams is now calling leads and then contacts, okay? Leads is what we used to call not met. Contacts, and it's a little tricky. I'm not talking about a two-way conversation like we track contacts. I'm talking about a contact in the database, okay? A lead is somebody that you have gotten, uh, that you do not have permission for a two-way relationship yet. So that's maybe somebody that um, clicked on one of your Facebook ads, but you haven't got a hold of them yet. Or maybe somebody that, you know, stopped by an open house, yet they haven't returned any, any, any future communication that you've attempted. It's basically a one-way relationship. You're chasing them more or less, okay? What they suggest what Keller Williams suggests on that is to run them through a 19 to connect process, okay? So nine, that is 19 touches. That could also, by the way, be somebody that you are uh, a neighborhood that you're farming. So let's say there's 100 people in the neighborhood and you want to get penetration in this neighborhood. So you're going to start communicating your value to them and seeing if you could create some relationships, right? So they say, until you have permission for a two-way relationship, meaning you've offered something of value and they've come back and said, hey, I, I kind of like this. Let's keep talking, right? Um, you should do 19 touches per year. And here's a breakdown of what those 19 touches ought to be. Four quarterly calls or a quarterly call, which is, of course, four times a year, okay? There is a smart plan for that. It, it, in, in effect, it, they call it a smart plan, but re what really it is is just a reminder, right? So if you open command every day, it'll tell you the people you should be calling. So... Um, you stick those people on a quarterly call, so you just attempt to reach them every quarter, okay? Um, 12 touches, that's monthly email newsletter or market report or video of some kind, okay? A lot of this you can automate as well. That could be a monthly neighborhood nurture. That could be the, you know, M uh, MMO and you giving a, a video on, you know, explaining one of the slides. That could be an email newsletter where you're offering additional uh, you know, consultation and, you know, kind of interpretation of the marketplace, that kind of stuff. Two touches, which are things like promotional, direct mail, magnets, calendars, market reports, something like that. That's generally physical, right, in the mail, okay? And then one annual party or annual event, okay? Now, the second that they respond and you create that relationship, now it's a two-way relationship and according to Keller Williams, they would not be a lead anymore. Now they would be a contact. Okay, so they move from being a lead to being a contact. At that time, they need more touches. Okay, so now, and this, is, this has been researched for 25 years, if not more, uh, best practices so that people understand uh, or, or so that you can um, always be top of mind, right? Always be top of mind. So the 36 touches, are the following four email or I'm sorry, four telephone calls per year, same as before. Okay, 26 uh, touches. This is comparable to the 12 up here. Now they get 26. That could be the bi weekly neighborhood nurture, right? Or that could be the monthly neighborhood nurture plus the monthly email newsletter, something like that. And it rotates the weeks, okay, or some item of value. Okay, 26 times, two touches per year. So those that you, because that's going to be, you know, could be expensive, right? You buy them, a, you know, uh, you bring them to the carnival and you pay for the face painting and you pay for the photographer and you, you know, buy them some uh, cocktails or whatever and invite them to a movie showing, you know, it can be a little expensive. So you want to be a little bit, um, you, you want to give more value to those that you have a closer relationship with right? So two of those per year, and then four touches, which are promotional, direct mail, etc. Okay, that's physical stuff. So they should be getting something in the mail from you every quarter if you have a relationship. Now, that begs a couple of questions. Number one, how are we going to track all this stuff, right? So you should have a year at a glance calendar that shows you Hey, this is when the parties are. 
this is my marketing strategy to make sure these touches happen, right? So if, for example, an email newsletter is going to go out on the third of the month, then it needs to be proofed by, I don't know, let's say the 26th of the month, the previous month. So now that it's on the big calendar, it needs to be on your 4 and one it needs to be on your business plan or your GPS, and obviously, hopefully, obviously, it needs to be on your calendar, okay? Because the second you miss that deadline, it's everything else is going to go, go to crap, okay? So because we are running a business and we own a business and the majority of us do not have anyone else working for us or with us, it's your job, <laughs> right? You got to understand that sometimes you're a realtor and sometimes you're the realtor's assistant, right? Or you're the realtor's marketing person, right? So it's got to go onto the calendar. It's got to go onto the calendar. So if something needs to happen this day, what needs to happen to prepare for that so that it can be executed flawlessly and nothing slips through the cracks? Because the second something slips through the cracks, guys, it's expensive when we make mistakes, right? If somebody gets off the phone with me and says, hey, Bill, you're my guy. Just call me November 1st and we'll get started. Say, what time on November 1st do you want me to call you? And they'll laugh a little bit and say, I'm serious. I am going to be your guy. And from this moment forward, anything you need about real estate, I'm, I want you to call me. So would you like to call at nine o'clock or 903, right? I, I know you're smirking a little bit, but I'm, I'm dead serious, right? You make a commitment, then you execute on the commitment. It's a whole different, it's a whole different feel, okay? So you put it on the calendar, you make the call, you start the relationship. If you choose not to make the call or you don't have a system in place to make certain that you make the call, somebody else is going to get paid. And then when you see on Facebook that they bought a home and it pisses you off, you should be pissed off because you didn't earn the relationship. Does that make sense? Okay. So I know I'm speaking a little in your face today, um, but this stuff is really important. This stuff is really, really, really important. Okay. So you know, you can start small, but whatever you commit to, make sure it's on your calendar. Make sure it is on your calendar. Okay. Any questions so far? Now, the other thing it begs a question on is, you know, somebody, uh, I heard this maybe six months or something ago, and, and it never really dawned on me, which is almost embarrassing to say, but you might say to yourself, well, I don't have all these people's addresses that are in my database. Guys, we're in real estate. All we think about is addresses, right? We need to get addresses. If you don't know where they live, how are you going to be their real estate advisor? <laughs> Does that make sense? Okay. Um, so you might want to look at your database and say, hey, is this a a hot mess here is some here, some here, some here. I got this guy's email, but I don't have a cell. I got this woman's cell, but not her email. I only have their Instagram handle. You know, let's take some time, ideally every single day as your lead generator, to go through your list and say, hey, I need to figure out how to get this person's email, right? So can I send them a WhatsApp message or a, or a cell phone message, text or whatever? Or can I call them and offer them something and ask them for their email? Right. Hey, I'd like to send you something that I found. It's an article about this topic that we talked about last week. Can I email it to you? By the way, I, I don't think I have your email. What's the best way to get you by email? Right. And you can start to barter value for whatever data you lack. Make sense? So this is a this is a database discussion here. A database discussion. So every single day you should be making your database either larger or more or it should get more data, okay? And I know this is a little elementary. I know we're talking about some concepts that we talk about a lot here, but, but sometimes I, there's a lot of people here who do not have perfectly accurate databases. And we've been talking about it for months. So please commit to getting your database in better shape, fair? Hey, Bill, I wanted to just to add something that I, I really took from that 36 touch class about um, like the events, Please, because as a single agent or a new agent, you're like, well, I don't have money to have an event and I don't have a whole list of clients to invite. But um, I thought it was helpful that they made the point that one, you can go in with a few other agents 
like a, if you have a movie theater event or something, no one knows whose clients are whose, yes. you know, a good way to, you know, to share costs. And they said, and then the other part of that was they said they never pay for the events. They get all of them sponsored, That's you know, right. by shelter or whoever, you know, like other companies that want to help promote their products, um, you know, builder, you know, like uh, there's different things. So I thought, okay, that's something good to, to keep in mind for, you know, when you're ready to do the events, because that made it sound less daunting than, oh my gosh, I have to come up with events for people that it's going to cost a lot. Exactly. Great. Thank you for adding that. And by the way, events could also be digital in some, in, in some degrees. I mean, I know we're opening up a bit, but like some events you, we had a, um, um, uh, like a sommelier came on and like it was an exclusive kind of thing. So like the uh, the agent bought like two or three wine bottles for, you know, like 20 people or something. And then they did a tasting. Um, I've heard a story about an agent that basically hired a, a, um, a magician and then all, uh, invited all of their um, families with, with young kids. And they all hopped on Zoom and the magician did their thing, right? So you can get creative. There's a lot of stuff out there. What Ryan's referring to in terms of sponsorship is this idea of like, hey, if I give O'Kelly a bunch of business or I give my home inspector a bunch of business or I give the mold company a bunch of business, then it wouldn't be unheard of for them to want some FaceTime with my audience, right? With my database, right? You guys, I mean, that's kind of like where, that's where we're headed. Your audience is like your followers, if you will right? Or your social media friends, that's your network. YouTube pays you on subscribers, right? The second I think you get over what, 800 or a thousand subscribers, they send you a check. You see what I'm saying? Okay. So um, does anyone else have any questions about this idea here? Can I add on to something that they did at the 36 touch that I thought was oh, a really good marketing good strategy? Please. They did these socks. They said they branded their, uh, I can't remember what their logo was, but they had or, a different- Door knocker. Yeah. And then they did like different color socks. So it's kind of like every year that they were, some of their high you know, clientele, they would give them different color socks each year. So whereas their clients were literally expected that, you know, but um, I don't know. It was, it was, I liked it. I thought it was a really good idea to stay on top of um, people's minds, especially when you're putting the socks on, like, how can you not like that? <laughs> Completely agree. Yeah. Again, it doesn't have to be overly expensive. Right. We, um, I know JC Mirabella did something really cool over um, COVID where she sent out um, like some, uh, uh, she, she, what did she do exactly? She sent out everybody like a box of like color pencils and like a pad or something like that. And then she had basically had a coloring contest and the kids like, you know, colored their favorite house and it was nice and colorful and they drew it or whatever and they had a contest. And I think they even had to include like her logo or something in it. So there's so many creative ideas that doesn't always have to be about helping somebody buy a home or sell a home, right? We're supposed to have fun in this business. Make sense? Okay. Um, I would just want to remind you, I was looking for one. Let me see if this is it. That's, that's not it. I'm looking for a... Kind of on one second, nah, same thing. Um, I was looking for a drawing that Killer Williams has that um, it basically shows you the funnel, right? How do you can how do you receive the the leads? What's your system to convert the lead to make them a contact? And then what is the thirty six touch plan that you execute on uh, to keep the relationship? top of mind and strong. Okay, guys, um, I know today was a bit short, but we're going to hop into bold. Um, I'm just going to encourage everyone to um, take bold seriously, okay? You've made an investment in yourself um, and, um, you know, really go in with an open mind, okay? I don't know if they're going to do this, but what they used to do is they said, like, you know, go like this with your hands, right? And you squeeze it really, really tight. And then Okay, so that exercise is over. So now open your hand, right? So 
how do you want to receive the information you're going to get? Are you going to be closed-minded? Are you going to be like, I know how to do this? Or are you going to say, hey, Kent Williams talks a lot about this program. I bet it, there's something valuable in there. I'm going to come in with an open mind, okay? So it's going to be some stuff you're probably not used to experiencing. And I'm going to encourage you to go in with an open mind, okay? For those that are not participating, um, that does not mean that you can't work and have fun this over the next couple of weeks. Um, so just focus on the most important things, guys. And like what Liz and I talked about yesterday, um, the most important things is having conversations because the more conversations you have, the more people you're gonna add to your network, right? And whenever you wanna share something, the more people that will hear it and that will lead to appointments and closings and all the other stuff. So um, take today and, and go out there and there are people who left to their own devices will choose a weak agent. And you all know that you care more than the average agent, right? About making sure this client has an awesome real estate experience. And so go out there and don't be afraid to let them know that working with you is going to be special, okay? Um, you all have an awesome, awesome day. Thanks, Bill. Bye, everybody. Bye.